Hi, welcome to the Dr. Allie Show. My name is Dr. Allie Mendelson, and every week I'm going to be covering health-related topics and talking about what you can do to get healthy, stay healthy, give you some action steps, all that good stuff. So last week we were talking about diabetes, and I really didn't get through everything. So today we're going to be talking about diabetes. And it's not just about learning what diabetes is, it's about how to get better from diabetes, how to reverse diabetes. And I know um, many people listening will think, well, I've never heard that diabetes can be reversed or I've been told it cannot be reversed. That's not true. Diabetes can be reversed if you know what to do, if you know what to do and it's all lifestyle. Diabetes is one of those diseases that unknowingly you give it to yourself by the type of lifestyle that you have. It's, again, it's not something that you know that you're doing, and many people have it for so long and don't know that there are things that they can do to get better. So that's what I'm covering today, and that's what we talk about at the office. If you have any questions, please call me at 888-522-3331. Again, my name's Dr. Allie, or you can go onto my radio show website, dralliesshow.com. That is D-R-A-L-L-I-E show.com. You can send me an email. So uh, the, what we talked about last time, we left off with the, the three basic changes in your diet that you need to make. There are other things that you need to do, but diabetes is very associated with diet, obviously, because of the insulin resistance. So the three basic dietary changes for diabetes is removing the bad fats and replacing them with good fats. It is changing the meats that you're eating, and it's really removing all sugar from your diet. If there's no sugar in your diet, you're, you're not go, or grains, no sugar, let me clarify, clarify that, sugar or anything that turns into sugar, because when there's sugar in your blood, that's when your body releases insulin. When there's sugar in your blood, if there's too much sugar in your blood, you, you can die. And so your body releases insulin. And what the insulin does is it goes to your cells, it knocks on the door of the cell and says, can you take some of the sugar from this blood? The cell then takes the sugar from the blood and stores it as fat. But, your, but, you, but getting the sugar out of your blood is what saves your life. Because again, blood sugar that's too high, obviously you die. What happens is if you're constantly eating sugar or things that turn to sugar, your body's constantly making insulin, constantly knocking on the cells, cells' doors. The cells are taking in tons of sugar and storing them as fat. That's, that's, what, that's why sugar makes you fat, because of that exact reason. So what happens is the cells become resistant. They say, no, I can't take any more sugar. And that's what's called insulin resistant. The cells will not be able to take any more sugar in them. So your body has to then release more and more insulin to knock on more and more cell doors to try to get this sugar stored as fat. And so insulin resistance is what causes diabetes. Now, doesn't it make sense that just getting this blood, don't take in anything that will put sugar in your blood. And then there's no, then there's no problem. Another problem with insulin is that it ages you much faster. It ages your cells, it ages you. So the more insulin you take in, whether, whether your body makes it or you're injecting it, the faster you're aging. So, and all sugar from the diet. So let's talk a little bit about that first and then we'll talk about fats and meats. I really went into the fats and meats last time. So you can listen to that show on my radio show website, but I'll get into a little bit. So sugar or anything that turns into sugar. Now I'm not talking about carbs. I'm not this is not a no carb diet in any way. Is is getting rid of diabetes it doesn't mean you have to get rid of carbs. You just have to get you you can eat the right kind of carbs. And the the right kind of carbs come from vegetables. Um they come from vegetables. Not potatoes, sorry. <laughs> not even sweet potatoes, but absolutely um not corn either. Of course, like everyone's favorite carbs, everyone's favorite carbs slash vegetables, but squashes and tons of vegetables, even pumpkin and zucchinis and, and broccoli. Cause I know there's a lot of like those no carb diets where there's a lot of vegetables that you can eat. You can eat those vegetables on this. This is not no carb. We're talking about no sugar and no grains. So no sugar means no sugar. No grains means just no flour. And again, it's it's sometimes sounds a little more difficult than it really is. And we do a lot of workshops at my office and we have a nutrition program where you can come every week and get like an hour and learn more and more about how to change your lifestyle. But getting rid of sugar, getting rid of um, f 
most of the fruits, I mean, you can eat Granny Smith apples, you can eat berries, and you can eat grapefruit. But you can't eat other, sh- other fruits when you're trying to get rid of diabetes because they just really turns right to sugar. So again, you can, there are some fruits that you definitely can eat, but you don't want to eat any flour or any breads or pastas or pretzels or rolls or even sprouted bread is not, and again, if you're trying to get rid of diabetes, you can't even eat the sprouted stuff, even though that's the absolute healthiest, healthiest bread and flour. But we want to, when you want to reverse diabetes, that's one thing that you have to do. Now that doesn't mean you can't eat anything sweet. You know, so there's xylitol and there's stevia and there's coconut flour and almond flour and there's chocolate cake made with baked with made with black beans and cocoa and eggs and butter. And that's all good. And you can eat that. You can eat a lot of that on this diet. So it's not about getting rid of anything sweet. It's just getting rid of anything that puts sugar puts um, that causes your body to release insulin. Now, so another interesting thing. So xylitol and stevia are natural healthy replacements for sugar. They will not spike your insulin. They will not cause your body to release insulin. Uh, But I'm not sure if you knew this, a lot of people don't know that artificial sweeteners, Splenda, Equal, Aspartame, do you know that that your body recognizes those as a sugar and will release insulin when that is introduced to your body? So you're not doing anything good for yourself by getting those artificial sweeteners and so it your body will still release insulin as if you've eaten sugar and now th- and those are worse than sugar because of their chemicals like some of them cross cross the blood brain barrier they're massively toxic to your nervous system they're just very dangerous you're better off eating regular sugar than those artificial sweeteners but xylitol and stevia are really really good alternatives so there's all kinds of great recipes and great ideas and really good things that you can eat. You can even take um, an unsweetened chocolate bar, melt it, put in some, you know, mix in some powdered xylitol, and maybe some heavy cream that's grass fed, and you have truffles that are totally fine and, and healthy, and there's no sugar, it won't spike your blood sugar. It's not the chocolate that's bad, it's the sugar in the chocolate. There's tons of recipes that we have that has, of course I'm talking about chocolate again, did anyone catch that? So there's <laughs> there's tons of recipes that we have that, um, that, has, that has chocolate in it, that tastes good, that is sweet, you can make muffins with flax seeds, I'm sorry, flax meal and almond meal and Granny Smith apples that are amazing muffins. You can make flax meal bread. You can make flax meal pizza crust. You can make flax crackers and you can make stuff like Parmesan cheese crackers. Uh, there's there's grainless pancakes and there's grainless granola. There's so many things. You just some, it's just not something that you're used to hearing about. You know, most people think, oh, if I can't eat carbs and there's nothing out there, but there's so much. You just, you may have to come to some of our workshops so that you can learn about it. Come by and get the book. You know, whatever it is that you need to do, if you want to get rid of your diabetes, if you want to heal, you know, you got to let your body heal and you got to do the right things. And it's, again, it's not hard. Most people, when they do this, they're like, some people, when they come in and they're very sick and we say, listen, you know, you can get better, but this is what you have to do. Like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so scary. I can't do that. I can't, what, that, my gosh. (laughs) And then like literally within a week, they're like, well, that was easy. I mean, it's unbelievable. I have to start getting people to come on my show and talk about how easy it was. <laughs> it's like, wow, that was so much easier than I thought it was. And it really, really is. So if you're interested in coming, I have free workshops every month. We have a nutrition program that we do that really specifically helps people change their, change their lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's really a lifestyle. And so if you're interested, my name is Dr. Ali. I'm in Farmington, right near West Hartford. My number is 888-522- three 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 one and my radio show website is dr ali show.com that's d-r-a-l-l-i-e show.com all right so that's talking about sugar i actually have um a really good workshop coming up that's really going to be focused on that's really going to be focused on diabetes so again call and register for that So after removing all sugar from your diet, you have to remove bad fats and replace them with good fats. Lots and lots and lots of healthy fat, like I spoke about last week, good healthy fat will totally satisfy your hunger and, 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 and satisfy you and satiate you. Nothing satisfies hunger like, like fat, like really good fat. So a lot of these recipes have lots of, and and it's the quality of the fat. So margarine, bad 
grass-fed butter, good. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of grass-fed butter and grass-fed cream and grass-fed milk. And you can contact me. I can tell you where to get it. You can get it at local health food stores or Whole Foods. Trader Joe's has some grass-fed stuff. Uh, even Stop and Shop has some, and BJ's have some grass-fed cheese. So there's lots of places that you can get this. So it's not, again, it's not, you don't have to spend all your money doing it. You can find it at BJ's and Trader Joe's and you can, you know, replace the carbs that you're eating. Just kind of change, you just change what you're doing. It becomes like a new habit. And we also talked about changing the meat. We talked about that last week. You may want to listen. I don't want to go into all that again, but you want to go from conventional meat to grass fed meat because that's super healthy, awesome for you. Totally helps your body heal, even reduces cholesterol. So now we're going to be talking about, we already talked about good and bad of um, good and bad carbs, fats, and meat. Let's talk about exercise. So exercise is something that a lot of people also have uh, misconceptions about. And when it comes to diabetes and just being healthy in general, you really have to exercise to, to, to start healing the hormones in your body. And so when you say exercise, people think, oh my gosh, I have to exercise an hour or two a day um, every single day in order to lose weight. And some people say, you know, I exercise two hours a day and I still don't lose weight. And it's because you're not exercising properly and you can't exercise too much. Too much exercise is bad for you. Too much in exercise and done the wrong way is will cause your body to release cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which will put fat right around the middle and it will make your arteries and blood vessels weaker. So you don't want to exercise too much and that's great news, but you want to exercise properly. So and exercising properly means doing burst training or surge training. Exercising improperly means doing like long, slow, like hang out on the treadmill at 60% of your maximum heart rate. That's what we learn to do, but that's not right. You want, you want, what you want to do is you want to, it's, it's, um, to start out, it's a minute on and a minute off. A minute of high intensity exercise, whatever it is you're doing, you can run on the treadmill as fast as you can for a minute and get your heart rate to hundred percent. And then you slow down for a minute and then you do it for a minute and then you slow down for a minute. You do that for like 12 minutes and that's really all you need to do. And you can do the same thing with push-ups and with sit-ups and with squats and with bench presses or whatever else there, whatever other kind of exercise on the, on the elliptical, um, outside running, whatever is swimming, whatever it is you do, you want to get your heart rate up high and then let it relax and get it up high and let it relax. That gets your natural hormones balanced. That will increase your testosterone. Even if, even in women, it's really healthy to have increased testosterone. It will increase your human growth hormone. So you'll burn fat for 36 hours post-exercise instead of just burning fat during exercise. It will make you more, make your cells more insulin sensitive. When you exercise like this, your cells become insulin sensitive and they will grab that sugar right out of your bloodstream. And that's, again, the opposite of insulin resistant is insulin sensitive, and that it helps your body recover and heal and reverse from diabetes. So another way to do the burst training is 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. So you have to see, you know, you may want to start with a minute. You may want to start with 20 seconds. Everybody kind of feels differently about this. When you're starting with 20 seconds on and 20 seconds off, like you can even run in place for 20 seconds as fast as you possibly can. Then just do nothing for 20 seconds and then do it again for 20 seconds and then do nothing. Do that three times and then, you know, get like six exercises and do them all three times. And that's about 12 minutes. You want to warm up for a couple of minutes after, I mean, before you do that. We do boot camp, a free boot camp at our office that is that is 100% burst training, 12 minutes. Amazing. We also sell a DVD that is this exact burst training that you can do at home. But I recommend people sometimes to come into the office first to just try it and we can kind of watch you and make sure you're doing things properly. And then if you feel like doing it at home and buying it, then you can do that too. We do this on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday mornings. So if you're interested, give me a call 888-522-3331 and let me know you're interested in the boot camp. You can come and check it out. Again, that's 888-522-3331. 
but it's the reason why I like it is it's it's easy to wrap your like some people think oh my gosh I have to exercise for an hour and you like don't your head is in that it's hard to get your head wrapped around like going and killing yourself for an hour but 12 minutes that's easy the exercise itself when you're doing it is intense I'm not going to say it's not you're like sweating in a, within like 30 seconds it's intense but it feels good and it's a short period of time. You don't have to exercise for hours. And you're not going to release cortisol when you do this type of exercise. It's the opposite of that. It really heals you. And when you're trying to reverse diabetes, you want to be more insulin sensitive. You want to burn fat quicker. You want to turn your body into a fat burner. And you want to get more oxygen into your cells so that you can heal. And so it's really, it's awesome. So, you know, we're going to be talking about like just in general, the amazing, amazing power in your body. I mean, your body is amazing. Like you can reverse diabetes. You can heal from cancer. Your body can reverse asthma and every, and, and many, many other things by just treating it the right way. But un, but like, under, like we don't necessarily always think this way. Like we have this amazing intelligence, amazing body. It's a, a very, it's amazing design. One drop of blood contains 5 million red blood cells, 7,000 white blood cells, and thousands of platelets. And that's just one drop of blood. And you start thinking about this, like, oh my goodness, like your body is just an unbelievable machine. Your red blood cells can live about 120 days and they make 300,000 trips through your bloodstream. That's almost two trips a minute through your entire bloodstream. Your heart weighs less than one pound and pumps two and a half gallons per minute or 1,314,000 gallons per year. Start thinking about this when you think, oh, I, there's no way my body can reverse diabetes. Think about how amazing that power is in your body that does these things. Energy output of your heart of heartbeat in a 24 hour period alone is enough to raise three fully loaded Greyhound buses off the ground. And if stretched out, your arteries and veins would cover 12,000 miles. And amazingly enough, your blood, red, red blood cells can take two trips per minute. So they can go 24,000 miles per minute. Isn't that amazing? And your nerves transmit their signals at 300 miles per hour. It's just amazing. Don't underestimate the power of your body to heal don't. That's the biggest mistake that people make. You have like this intelligence in your body. You have just this innate intelligence that knows what to do, right? If you've had a baby, you know that your body just makes it. You don't make it. You don't think about it. Your body makes that baby. You, you breathe. Like we, we don't have to think about breathing. Like start thinking about that stuff. We just have just this amazing, beautiful intelligence in our body. And all that intelligence is in your brain, right? Because it's in, it's all in your brain. Now the intelligence and power and information from your brain travels through your spinal cord, out your nerves to all your organs. That's the, that's your nervous system. That's how your nervous system functions. And if you read Gray's Anatomy, it says your nervous system is the master controller of your entire body because that is the only thing that makes your body function. So think about if, when you become paralyzed, you know, what, how, how does that happen? It happens because there's a slice or a cut in your spinal cord. So the power from your brain cannot get through where that slice is and everything from there down is done because your body does not have any intelligence on its own. All the intelligence comes from the brain. And if it can't get through an area, everything from there down, muscles and ligaments and tendons and organs, everything stops functioning because Everything in your body needs that power from your brain in order to work properly. And that's your nervous system. That is the most important system. Anytime someone comes with a problem, whether they have pain or not, we always look at the nervous system. Always. You always have to see how healthy is your nervous system. So we know, and, and it's the same thing with diabetes. How healthy is this person's nervous system? And if you're going to start going on this diet and you're going to start exercising and you want to reverse diabetes, you have to have a really, really healthy functioning nervous system so that everything can work properly and work in your favor. With, you know, you could have diabetes. One of the reasons you could have diabetes is because the brain to your pancreas is, is being pinched, not like um, a par paralysis, but a squeeze. 
like taking a rubber band and putting it around your finger and your fingertip starts to get a little blue. Well, it didn't fall off yet, but eventually it will, right? You, you, if your fing fingertip doesn't get enough blood, it'll eventually fall off and die. It'll die and fall off because it doesn't get the blood. It's not getting the blood. So it's the same thing with your organs. If 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 there's a squeezing between the brain and the and an organ anywhere along the along the spinal cord or the nerves, and something's being squeezing it that organ is not going to get enough information and it's going to slowly, slowly die. And no one has ever, no, you know, most medical doctors, they just don't look at the body that way. They really manage symptoms more. They don't look to say, well, why is that organ not functioning properly? Why is your heart not functioning? You have high blood pressure. Why is your heart not functioning properly? Your digestive system isn't working. It's, you're not going to the bathroom or whatever. Why is that organ not functioning properly? So it's really important. They don't look at that. That's just kind of not how they're trained. But that's, think about it. That's the most important thing first is to see why is that not working? Let's look to see your nervous system to see if the brain is properly communicating with your organs first. And if it's not, we got to remove whatever interference there is. And the way to, to, to determine if there's interference is you have to take an x-ray because your brain is surrounded by your skull and your spinal cord is surrounded by your your the the bones of your spine and if your bones if you have a scoliosis or your curve is going the wrong way if there's any pressure on from those bones onto that spinal cord that's going to interfere with the brain to the body connection things are not going to work properly and unless you look at that you're never going to really get to the cause of what's of, of your of your problem and so we take x-rays and you get treatment and exercises specifically based to fix your x-rays if there's a scoliosis our goal is to correct that if there's loss of a curve the goal is to correct that and that takes some adjustments and exercises that you do but always we always have to look at that so there's two different ways to look at at your body there's treatment and there's prevention and then there's true healing right so you can treat a disease or you can try to prevent a disease or if you have a disease you can treat and manage your disease or you can um, cure your disease or recover from your disease Does that makes sense so we have tons of healthy people coming in and I treat my children also I adjust them and they eat healthy so they don't ever get sick but you don't want to wait you know you don't really want to wait till you get sick in order to start taking care of your body that's just that's just kind of the medical model but that's just not that that may not be the right thing for everybody i mean to me the medical model it's it's crazy like why would you just let you know just let your body just deteriorate to the point where you're like sick or have a disease and like okay well maybe we should try to manage this disease why not take care of your health so you don't get disease. Take care of your children's health <clears throat> so you don't get disease. And if you have a disease because you didn't take care of it, like you didn't know what to do, let's reverse that and get you healthy and keep you healthy, right? That's what it's all about. You know, there's no more, there's nothing more important or more valuable than your health. And the only time may, you may ever think about that is when your health isn't doing well. So sometimes, like, we just are trained to just, you know, just kind of go along and do what we want, and then things start to go wrong, and then we're like, oh my gosh, I need to take care of this. No, you need to take care of it before something happens so that there's no suffering, right? Or the least amount of suffering, the least amount of damage. You never want to let your body go too far where now you're just managing a disease for the rest of your life. And so we have to, like, again, if you have diabetes if you have something wrong today we're specifically talking about diabetes we'll put you on a plan to reverse the diabetes so that you no longer have the diabetes if you're absolutely perfectly healthy and you don't want to ever get diabetes you can come to the workshops you can come in for a consultation and we'll teach you how to live your life so that you don't ever get it right so you don't ever get it so give me a call if you want to make an appointment if you want to come to my free workshops I have free workshops every month on all topics related to health. We talk about all the five essentials, you know, maximizing your mind and your brain and your healthy brain, maximizing your nervous system, which we just talked about, maximizing your intake of really good quality nutrients, maximizing your body's ability to 
exercise and take in oxygen and then minimizing toxins. There's always like that component. We don't necessarily look at that first. It just, everyone is different. But with diabetes, there's always um, a toxic component there just because most people who have diabetes either had a bad lifestyle for a long time or have taken medication. And you need to like clean your body out of that. So the, the, um, my, my, um, the radio shows every week and all of my advanced talks and my workshops all center around those five essentials to keep to get you healthy to keep you healthy to to reverse any kind of disease that you have and then when you reverse it then you make sure that you can you maintain like amazing health I mean again there's nothing more valuable than your health and when you have it when you when you're sick and then you get healthy you appreciate your body and your health so much it's so easy to take care of yourself after that and you know when you just when you're just getting started and you're feeling awful and you're you're frustrated and you're just craving sugar you know what we'll make sure to we make sure most people will start to feel better right away there's always something that we can do to make things a little easier make them start feeling better and once you start to feel better you gain that that inspiration that you know you can get better and when you know that it's much easier to make these changes so we always kind of start out slow unless someone is really gung-ho and they want to just go nuts and change everything right away some people are like that and it's awesome when they're like that I love that but most people aren't I personally I'm not like that I need to do things like one thing at a time do it right do the next thing get it get it into my lifestyle you know, feel good about it, do the next thing. So, you know, everything's individual. So we really kind of look at everyone individually, see where you are, where you've been, what you really need to get healthy and stay healthy. And that's really what it's all about. So if you're interested, you come to my office. My name's Dr. Ali. I'm Dr. Ali Mendelson. I'm in Farmington, right right by, um, right off 84, right by West Hartford. My phone number is 888-522- three 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 one or you can go onto my radio show website and you can listen to shows and send me an email or whatever and that is dralliesshow.com d-r-a-l-l-i-e show.com and again my number is 888-522-3331 thank you so much for listening and have an awesome awesome day